These pandemics are 102 years apart, but they both follow this wave pattern spreading in the spring of 1918. And then even after people did learn more about how to combat it, and after it was discussed more, of course, in public, a second and worse wave in the fall. Last time, the most deaths actually occurred. Keep this in mind for what we're about to live through. Most occurred across four months in the fall of 1918. Now, I'll mention death rates do reflect a range of factors, not just only the spread. Last time, once the reality set in the pandemic was quickly part of the entire culture, with even nursery rhymes about how quickly influenza was flying into people's lives. I had a little bird, his name was Enza. I opened the window and influenza. Influenza. However you can get anyone to understand, including kids, you try. Now, many worry that today Americans are going through some kind of pandemic fatigue, even as we also intellectually know vigilance is more needed than ever. One way to think about this is taking in some of these lessons from 1918, and the easiest one is a medical classic. First, do no harm. Avoid home remedies or rumors that are just not from vetted medical sources. The 1918 versions may sound somewhat ridiculous today. Bloodletting, whiskey, tree bark, recommending mercury, which can be poisonous. Back then, one doctor was even on record recommending champagne, saying there's no finer pick-me-up after an attack of influenza than good fits. But before we sit here today and pass too much judgment on what people thought then, it's worth reflecting that similarly bad advice is really all over the place right now, from the Internet rumors about garlic to misinformation peddled from the White House. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that. That goes to a piece of this which has gotten a lot of attention, leadership. President Trump's documented COVID failures defined the end of his term, may define his place in history, certainly define much of the campaign. He followed the negative example of President Wilson, who was also downplaying the virus. One historian explaining Wilson was absolutely neglectful of it. Medical experts know that Trump's response is far worse because in contrast to Wilson, he had better medical information immediately available. Another lesson, no matter what century we're living in, if a pandemic is spread by human droplets, you're safer avoiding droplets. If you're hiking alone in the mountains, great. If you're 10 feet from the nearest person, great. You don't need a mask at all times as some sort of medical fashion statement. But as soon as people are near, as you can see from this visual history, then it's time to wear a mask. That was some of the sound advice as far back as 1918. These pretty remarkable pictures tell the story. And the lesson here on your screen is that you can still act as an individual to protect the people around you and the wider public. We can all take some humility in this one because what you're looking at is how people were doing this regularly back then, facing higher risk and more suffering and far less science and technology. And surely if they can do it, as you see here, 102 years ago, we can try to match their example today. Now, another takeaway from 1918 is, and this is the big one, how pandemics end. That flu essentially had to burn itself out like a forest fire with just horrific loss of life. And one big reason why was they failed scientifically to find a vaccine. Science uh, knew next to nothing about viruses at this time. The optical microscopes they had couldn't show you a virus. Virus is much too small for them. These poor scientists were looking for a needle in a haystack uh, when uh, they didn't know it was a needle they were looking for, and the needle was too small for them to see. So no wonder they didn't find it. Experts explained to us, how do you look for something you can't see? That's what they were up against. And this lesson matters because if you still hear loose talk about, well, just maybe let COVID run its course or herd immunity. We should listen to the doctors and these sort of medical historians who carefully document why that is not anywhere near any type of outcome you would ever choose. It was the last resort they lived through in 1918. And anyone who knows about it basically says, you never want to live through that again. 
And we have evidence that we don't have to. Because this time, the scientists in this world were actually able to sequence the COVID DNA within two weeks. And then there's this public race for the fastest vaccine in history. Several companies, as you've probably heard, touting these breakthroughs. One seeking emergency approval for a vaccine that would make potential distribution as soon as within weeks. While most people will not likely have access to vaccines until far later in 2021. Either way, experts say this vaccination timeline that we're looking towards is the best possible way to end a pandemic, even one that's been as difficult as this. Now, there's no real reason to assume 2020, uh, 2021 will be automatically better than 2020 or that this ends easily. Yet just as the 1918 flu seeped into the culture and conversation, today's culture has been eyeing the end of this pandemic across TV, music, and comedy. From Harlem's Dave East rapping Super Cat, virus dropped, tour dates moved him back, to Canadian station Drake dropping these hopeful bars heading into Thanksgiving. These are brand new lyrics that reference his earlier COVID era hit, Tootsie Slide. Quote, now I'm giving house tours until it's back to world tours. Play that mask off when they find the real cure. Drake referencing a big hit from Future, Mask Off. And while, yes, medical fact checkers may note a vaccine is different than a cure, we all get the idea. And if the prospect of a little light at the end of the tunnel a day coming when we don't just do the house tour you see there, but we do world tours. If that makes restrictions a bit easier, then all the better. So I would just say, let's all meet there when it's time and play that mask off when they do find the real cure. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.